Hey there film fans, today I'm going to talk about Mad Max Fury Road Black and Chrome which is the re-release of 2015's Mad Max Fury Road but as the director quite liked seeing some cuts of it in the editing room in black and white he decided to re-release it in black and white and he now says that it's the preferred way that for him to watch his movie. I really like the first one, it's not got a massive amount of plot, there's a lot of action, um, lots of car shape, really lush cars as well, I really just want all the cars, they're beautiful. Um, but it's a lot of fun, it's some really beautiful set pieces, um, some basic but fun dialogue, really cool characters, it's quite feminist, there's a lot of stuff I like about it. It reminds me a bit of one of my childhood favourite movies, Tank Girl, with the um, water being the main currency, although I hear that Tank Girl doesn't hold up that well, I need to go back and check it out at some point. As a fan of the colour version, um, what stuck out to me was that most of it was quite sapia tinted, so I kind of thought this might work for black and white. Plus, uh, Mark Kermode's show at the BFI last week, I saw some clips that looked really good. Um, I do think that certain aspects of the set design really work well in black and white. For example, the um, war boys have the white face paint, and then up against the Citadel backdrop, they really stand out, and it looks quite, I don't know, old black and white B-movie-y. It looks, it looks very impressive. Um, Equally, equally, Mad Max has some kind of hallucinations and memories of things that have happened in the past and the black and white makes it feel a lot more claustrophobic and in certain ways more like a fuzzy memory maybe. However, I feel that certain scenes like the car chases um, lost a little bit in that the flames are really quite integral. Um, you know, there's a lot of fire and that's lost quite a lot in the black and white version. And also for me, this is a bit of a silly point, but one of the things that stuck out for me about the original version was there's this guitarist dude on the back of a lorry who's got a bright red guitar, I'm pretty sure, um, who kind of bungee jumps around as they're driving along. He's like their soundtrack they used to accompany their road trips. Um, and in black and white, he just seems to lose a little bit of his impact. So it's kind of interesting because the original colour version felt very sandy and dirty, and that's not quite the same, but in some ways I, I did really like seeing it. I think that this is good as a supporting film. It's something for fans to see, as opposed to... I wouldn't want it to be the original version, because I do think elements are lost. A bit like... I, I read someone else say it, a bit like a fuzzy memory, like, you know, it's like the way you remember something where you lose some of the details, um, which is a strange way... It wouldn't be a way I would choose to watch the film in the first instance, but... I did enjoy it a lot. I mean, it's such a great film. Me and my friend were gasping at the right moments, you know, totally engaged. And even one of our friends who is not an action fan at all came out of it and really enjoyed it. So, you know, thumbs up. Definitely worth a watch if you're an existing fan, but probably not the way I would recommend seeing Mad Max for the first time. What did you guys think? Do you agree with me? Let me know in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel.